Exterior Honeydew shop front, nightfall. Through a window on the upper level of Honeydukes, the marauders apparate. Interior storage room, a quiet room full of unmarked boxes, two entrances in and out. Where is everyone? Maybe they're late. James and Lily start to search the rest of the store for order members. Peter starts to scurry after them. Hey, Pete. Peter turns just as Sirius tosses him a lollipop. We're not here to steal candy. A floorboard creaks near the side entrance. Remus turns just in time to intercept a hex. <laughs> Avery Jr. steps out from the shadows. Sirius fires back and the deputy takes a stinging curse to the chest. Belly armors. Molster Jr. appears beside Avery Jr. Sirius's wand flies from his hand and into the Death Eaters. A standoff. Remus has his wand trained on Molesmore Jr. Avery Jr. has his wand on Remus. Molesmore Jr. has his wand on Sirius. Owls are such an underrated form of communication. Did you think this whole scheme up yourself, Avery? I'm impressed. Aren't you impressed, Remus? 15 points to Slytherin. <laughs> James, Lily, and Peter burst into the room. Expelliarmus! Sirius' wand flies out of Molesmore Jr.'s hand into James. Five against two. At that moment, Rosier Jr., Rabassin Lestrange, and Regulus Black all creep out of the shadows as well, surrounding the Marauders. You should really rethink the masks. Off the top of my head, Mulsaba, Avery, Rosia. What do you think? Sirius, Robastian, and Rodolphus? Robastian, for sure. And? Very clever, Potter. No syphilis? What a shame. We caught intruders at the manor this evening, and we think we know who. Why don't you start off and bother them, then? Watch your mouth, mud blood. James immediately punches Molesper right in the mouth. Lestrange breaks rank and hexes Sirius, knocking him across the floor. Spells fly every which way. Molesper Jr. and Baxton push Lily and James where Sirius has landed, while Avery Jr., Rosier Jr., and Regulus advance on Remus and Peter, pushing them in the opposite direction. Crucio! Lily ducks the curse while James scoops up a still dazed Sirius. They find refuge through the side entrance. They certainly graduated from bat bogey hexes then. James tosses Sirius' wand. He stands by the doorway, returning curses and hexes as they come through the door from Wolfsburg Jr. and Rabastin. We need a plan. Another curse hits the wall. Sirius whips an acid pop from his pocket. My plan is to shove this acid pop right up there. Lily looks to the side and sees a box marked with jawbreakers, an idea forming. Across the room, Avery Jr. and Rosie Jr. laugh as they cast curses at Remus and Peter, corralling them to a corner of the office. Remus just managed to block the onslaught while Peter ducks underneath the desk. Obscuro! A blindfold wraps itself around Regulus' eyes. Locomotor motor! Rosier's legs lock themselves together. He trips over and takes a blindfold of Regulus down with him. Remus dodges a hex from Avery, stumbling backwards. He lands with his wand hand in a barrel of taffy. Avery fires another spell at the box, freezing the taffy around Remus' hand and his wand. This one's payback for giving me detention on Halloween. 
in fifth year. Peter musters up enough courage to peek out from his hiding place and jinx Avery Jr. All three of them are shocked when Peter's jinx manages to knock Avery Jr. to the ground. Thanks, Pete. Regulus, Avery, and Rosier stand just as a flood of jawbreakers pours out across the floor. Lily directs them towards the Death Eaters, who slip and slide as they fall. Taking advantage of Lily's cover fire, Peter scurries across the room for shelter behind James. Sirius sprints to where Remus is still stuck. And caught in the cookie jar, Mooney. Not the time pad foot. A curse blasts right over their heads. Molesmore ah. Jr. appears directly behind Sirius, holding his wand up to the back of Sirius's head. He turns to face Molesmore Jr., the Death Eaters' wand now poking into his face. He slyly pushes his own wand into Remus's free hand. In a fluid moment, Remus points the wand over Sirius's shoulder right at Molesmore Jr.'s face. Lower your wand. Regulus points his wand in Remus's direction. Sirius attempts to go after him, but Molesmore pushes him back with his wand. Imagine how pleased the Dark Lord will be when the younger of the Black Brothers lays you at his feet. A curse hits Molesmore in the back. Alistair Moody stands at the top of the stairs, firing spells at every Death Eater in sight. Marlena Dorcas barge in behind him. As Regulus lifts his wand to disapparate, Sirius jumps forward and claws Regulus's mask from his face. But before they can attack, Rabastin yanks Regulus away and they disapparate. Moody raises his wand to deal the final blow to Molesport Jr., but he signals the other Death Eaters and they disapparate as well. Remus uses Sirius's wand to free himself and ducks down to retrieve his own. We're lucky you lot showed up. I came by Sirius's to join you for a drink. When I saw the letter, I thought something was amiss, so I brought it straight to Moody. And it's a bloody good thing she did. You've all got the brains of a ferret. Well, James said... And if James told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? Yes. Yes. How were we supposed to know the owl wasn't from you? I wouldn't have sent you an owl. I would have sent you a Patronus. Which begs the question, why didn't you send me one? You have been practicing your Patronuses, haven't you? To find practice. Meadows? Take them out to the Forbidden Forest this week and get them working, for Godric's sake. Exterior, grounds in Molesburg's Manor, dusk. The crack of a nearby apparition. Regulus stumbles as he lands. He looks up upon hearing another crack, or Bastin. They begin walking towards the gate. We still can't operate in. That is a privilege for the higher-ups. How does Dark Lord let you know you're the higher-up? Put it this way. If I was, I wouldn't be partnered with you. Urbastin touches the tip of his wand to the padlock and mutters an incantation. A magical current sizzles through the gate and it swings <sighs> open just enough to slip through. What will you tell them? Nothing. You will. It's a privilege to relay any and all news to the Dark Lord, Regulus. You know that. Why don't you want the honor, then? For the third time, the air cracks. Bellatrix is standing outside the gate. The men instantly duck out of sight as she approaches. I think she knows already. You think so? She doesn't look any different from usual to me. We used to call her... Helitrix. I'm just glad she's got eyes for Rodolphus, not- She brandishes her wand and blasts the nearby bush to smithereens. Satisfied, she walks away and enters the manor. Regulus and Rabastin emerge from the trees and follow Bellatrix, at a safe distance. Rabastin looks back at the destroyed bush. In-laws. Exterior, the Forbidden Forest, day. Dorcas faces the Marauders, arms crossed. Since none of you have managed your Patronuses yet, let's start with the basics. We all know what a Patronus is, Dorcas. Maybe you would like to demonstrate first, then? Dorcas flourishes her wand with her eyes squeezed shut, casting it non-verbally. A dolphin shoots out of Dorcas's wand and swims around her twice in a spiral. Meeting at Edgar's quarter till eight. The misty dolphin turns into wisps of nothing to suddenly appear in front of Peter. Meeting at Edgar's quarter till eight. Dumbledore and I have developed this for the Order's safety. The rest of the Order has been working on it to get theirs. You need to know this, no matter how difficult it is. 
Focus on producing a Patronus now. It doesn't need to be corporeal for the spell to work. The Marauders pair off, ready to practice. Remus closes his eyes. You thought we'd leave you because you're a werewolf? Mate, you know we'd follow you to the moon. The moon? Mooney, we thought you were sneaking out of Gryffindor parties to go study. Mooney, I love it. These voices get cut off by other memories. Monsters like you, Remus, ought to be kept under lock and key. Far away from good witches and wizards. James pulls a piece of chocolate out of his pocket and wordlessly hands it to Remus, who takes it and eats it. Expecto Patronum. An incorporeal Patronus beams out of James's wand. <laughs> you did it. Nicely done, love. Your move, Evans. Lily Evans, would you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Lily smiles as she successfully produces a corporeal dough. She and James both stare at it in awe. Bloody hell, are you mediocre at anything? He runs over to hug Lily and lifts her off the ground. They share a kiss. Sarah shuts his eyes, concentrating on a happy memory. But instead... I'm not turning into a disappointment like you. He opens his eyes to Remus's hand on his shoulder. All right. Perhaps we haven't picked something sensory enough. The memory has to be visceral in your mind. Most of my visceral memories are from the fifth floor corridor with- Remus snaps his arm, cutting him off. It. Remus looks away, shaking his head. Marlene is visibly frustrated, attempting the Patronus charm over and over. Dorcas notices. I know, I'm rubbish. You can say I've told you so. Darling, I would never- Why would I say that? At that moment, Peter's wand shoots out small sparks before disappearing. Did you guys see that? I think I did something. You've got to be bloody joking. I can't keep doing this. I'm sorry, but I need a break. I'll see you all later. Marlene disapparates. I'll go. Lily follows after her. Interior tea room day. Men in crisp and expensive looking robes fill the other chairs. Near the head of the table sits Abraxas and Lucius Malfoy, nervous but resolved to be there. Unnamed Death Eaters from further down the table give him dirty and suspicious looks. The Death Eaters are out to tea. Multiple Senior stands and the table immediately quiets. The Dark Lord senses regrets that he could not be here for this important meeting. However, he has commanded me to come up with a solution to our little problem. And what would that problem be? Every day, more and more blood sympathizers enter into the Ministry's ranks, and every day they get close to passing a law that would allow Auras to use unforgivable curses. They must be stopped. What is your solution? One of us must die. Lucius. Me? Why must one of us die? The tragic death of a pure blood at the hands of an Aura? They would hardly be able to pass their precious law in the face of the political uproar. Well, if it is to be Lucius who must die, then he would be honored. I'm sure he would be. But why should young Malfoy get the honor of dying for the Dark Lord's cause? Perhaps one of you would like to volunteer instead? McNair? Avery? Lestrange? All attention is turned towards her at the far end of the table. Is anyone opposed to the murder of the strange? No one says anything as Mulsford Senior begins to make his way to the other end of the table towards her who is sitting in horror. What say you? Any opposition to your death? What about Nathaniel Rosier? He's, um... He, he's seeing that half-blood, living with her even. Is he truly dedicated to the cause if he chooses to degrade himself in that way? I, I would. I might even go so far as to say that he's not even a part of our ranks anymore. He, he isn't here now to defend himself, is he? I suppose you live to see another day. 
I would use it in service to the Dark Lord if I were you. Multiple Senior sits back down at the head of the table and selects a cake, ignoring the tension of Ronto. Interior, the Three Broomsticks pub, day. Lily apparates into the bar. She sees Marlene Sydney alone at the end of the bar, nursing a pint. I thought you'd be here. Grand here, unpredictable, along with pathetic. Hey, that's my friend you're talking about. Be nice. Is it because this is Dorcas's project? You're trying to impress her? I feel, I feel like we're on the brink of something real here, something special. And if I'm the one to jeopardize the order, you might as well kick me out now. Oh, I don't have that kind of authority. If I did, I'd kick Sirius out ages ago. <laughs> Lily becomes distracted by Rabastin entering the bar with a stack of papers in his hands. He spots a group of student age wizards and starts handing out flyers. Oh, no, you don't. Lily stands up and Marlene immediately follows her. What are you doing here? Rabastin tries to leave, but Marlene shoves him and Lily rips a pamphlet from his hands. It's a sheet of paper with pure blood propaganda on it. Lily shares the pamphlet with Marlene. This is disgusting. I think that's really up to interpretation. Excuse me. He tries to push past. Marlene puts a hand on his chest as Lily scoops up the entire stack of pamphlets into her arms. Get out. Robaston slinks out of the pub. Can you believe this rubbish? Marlene uses a spell to incinerate the pamphlets. Meanwhile, Lily examines the one that she kept and stows it in her pocket. Interior, Wolfsburg's Manor Hall, night. Bellatrix stalks through the hall. That permanent semi-manic look quiets the other nameless Death Eaters though some mutter to each other and snicker once she's passed. She slips into a room plastered with faded wallpaper crowded with a few other Death Eaters. Wolfsburg Senior stands at their head, wand held loosely in his fingertips. They all stare across the room. Ah, Bellatrix. Have you met our guest? It's Lawrence, Anna's friend, currently kneeling, bound head to toe, gagged. He stares at Bellatrix as if the female presence will somehow be softer, kinder than the other Death Eaters. Who's this? Albert Lawrence, an aura at the Ministry. Caught him apparating home a few hours ago. This is what the Ministry has to offer us? She approaches the man, bending down so her face is next to his. He tries to twist to look at her. Her wand is in her hand before he has a chance. A flash of light, he keels over, frozen. The full body bind curse. Bellatrix. There it is, her constant leash. She returns to her place behind Mulsiver. Mulsiver flicks his wand at Lawrence. The curse lifts. You should be more careful. These are uh, dangerous times. He crosses to stand behind Lawrence, who starts to panic. Though muffled, he's clearly begging for his life. Mulsford lowers his wand, pointing it at Lawrence's head. Imperial. Lawrence's eyes unfocus. His terror fades. Exterior, Rosie's cottage. Night. The sharp crack of someone apparating into space. A cat somewhere yowls an alarm, sending trash bins clattering. Through the warped glass of the window, we see Rosier Sr., unaware of the man outside, unaware of anything beyond his protected bubble. Lawrence draws his wand, points it at the door, which unlocks with a soft click. It opens without a sound. He enters. Rosier still has his back turned, hasn't yet noticed a shadow falling into place behind him. Lawrence's shoes make a low scrape on the wooden floors. Who are you? You know who I am? You're making a huge mistake. Father Cadaver. 